Okay, let's go here. Is that me? Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Do you swear? <laughs> go ahead. Uh, yep. Um, and some of these are going to be repeats of General Rob, so I'm going to uh, skip some of the DHA overview and go right into the HIT area. Let's keep going. Uh, let me let's stop at the let's stop at the solar system. One one thing I'll, I'll throw out to you guys. I, I, you know, I um, John Rob mentioned the fact that I came from the FAA. I did an, a big IT consolidation when I was a CIO at the FAA. Uh, that was a um, that was a foray that uh, took me away from my field of expertise, which is basically in healthcare IT. I was a CIO of a, a major Blue Cross Blue Shield plan in California, 50 hospital system based in San Francisco, 14 hospital system based in Alabama. So I do know a little bit about health IT and uh, provider systems and payer systems. Um, but this, uh, let me uh, give you something to think about um, relative to this slide. Uh, when I kind of came to the DHA and the, and the military health system, I looked at the, I looked at the budget. You saw the, uh, the slide about the growth in the budget. Our budget right now, I think in uh, 14, was somewhere around $50 billion, which funnels through Dr. Woodson's office, comes down to the DHA, and comes down to the services. If we were a company with revenue of $50 billion, do you think we'd be in the Fortune 500? Any guesses, yes or no? Okay, where do you think we'd be in the Fortune 500? I think it's about 75. I think it's about 75. So if we think of ourselves as running a $50 billion company, the 75th largest company in the United States, publicly held company that is, would we be running the company the way we're running it now? And I think what the DHA is trying to do is to, to move us from the way we're doing things now to the way we need to be running this business if it was the 75th largest company in the United States. It's about maturity. It's about management. I think Emerald Moulton said it best, and I'm going to hit on it as we go forward, and that is he said, we're trying to get the services together to do everything in the same way. Um, and Mr. Marshall repeated that message. That is a big deal. It's a big deal for me, but having done this before, I can tell you that in my world, and I think we're finding this out in general, this is not about, in my world, it's not about technology. It's about anthropology. It's about change management. It's about culture eating strategy for lunch. It's about getting people together and doing things the same way. To reduce variation, the physicians will tell you, Reduce variation, you get improvement in clinical quality. Documented, documented quality improvement. And that's what we're trying to do. That's sort of the, that's sort of the overall message here. Go ahead. Next slide. Keep going. Keep going. That's the DHA. Oh, um, just so you know where the, uh, where the health IT directorate fits in the DHA, um, we are the center of the universe. Um, and... Um, that sounds presumptuous on my part, but actually that was, I think that was General Rob's insert into my slide deck, so I'm sure he'll have some things Keep to say about that. that. Yep. <laughs> I love you like a brother, yeah. <laughs> what have you done for me lately, right? That's right. Keep going, next slide. Okay, here are the 10 shared, come along, huh? 10 shared services. <laughs> the first five on the left stood up on October 1, so we, we celebrate our Stand up anniversary coincident with the, uh, with the anniversary of the DHA facilities, medical logistics, health information technology, TRICARE, and pharmacy. One of the things we have learned, um, if you take the top three, facilities, me medical logistics, and HIT, we have a lot to say about each other's space. And to, to that end, we have formed a committee where the facilities guys, the IT guys, and the logistics guys all come together um, and talk about what we're doing and how we're doing it. You know, the facilities guys want to know, hey, if I'm building a facility, what kind of IT support do I need? Well, we can tell them that. The logistics guys, what do you think they're trying to do? Well, one of their big uh, aspects of their business is medical equipment. You think maybe it'd be a good idea to start thinking about standardizing medical equipment the way we're thinking about standing, uh, standardizing IT? Again, we reduce variability, we get better purchasing power, we get better outcomes, we get easier maintenance, uh, we get lower cost. Next slide. 
Uh, spending, we'll keep, uh, keep going. I'll talk about IT spending in a second. One more, one more. Okay, health IT, what we're all about. Um, this is our vision and uh, mission, uh, but basically the elevator speech is as follows. The right information to the right people at the right time and in the right way. That is our, that is our mission. We gotta deliver the right information to the people who need it, when they need it, we got to deliver it in the, in, in the appropriate way. It's got to be secure, it's got to be relevant, it's got to be protected. Uh, and so that is sort of it in a nutshell in terms of what we're talking about in health IT. Next slide. Goals and strategies. Very simply, uh, people say, well, what, you know, what are your strategies? Well, here they are. Um, we are changing the tires on the car as we're going down the road. Obviously, we uh, have taken over the responsibility for uh, running IT and uh, uh, all of the services and so the first thing that we want to tell our customers now, our constituents, is that we don't want to break anything. We want to keep things moving forward. You know, we want to keep moving forward. We want to make these changes, but we can't disrupt operations. Our operating mission is the most important thing that we focus on. And so that is certainly the first goal. Uh, make our business case numbers. I'll show you the business case. Uh, again, it is a very a uh, rigorous business case. It is not um, a business case that is padded in any way. Uh, it has real deliverables. It has real results. And I can tell you, we have real accountability for that business case. So making our business case numbers, we'll show you how, we're, how we did in 14. Take a look at uh, 15, but uh, that is our second goal. Goal number three, keep our customers the services happy. As recently as this morning, I had an executive satisfaction meeting with one of our major customers, one of our flag officers in the medical service areas, one of the services. We have a standard set of questions. We ask all of our um, uh, executive uh, sur uh, surveys, if you will, um, and we track that and we track this, the performance about how we do it. We take notes, uh, we get back to them, and uh, we try very, very hard to keep, uh, keep our customers, the services happy. I think Admiral Moulton talked about the MOG and the MBOG and, and all the committees. We participate in all of that. All of our stuff goes through that governance process so everybody knows what we're doing. Um, and so that's where, uh, the, where, where we plug into the governance process. And then finally, support the efforts of our initiative around the um, acquisition of a new electronic health record for the military health system. Uh, that in itself is probably worth a day's worth of discussion. Uh, but uh, you are probably all aware that the uh, Department of Defense is out shopping for a new electronic health record. Uh, we had an RFP on the streets. The RFP closed. Uh, we're in the process of evaluating the responses to that RFP. And we uh, are targeting the summer of 2015 as the date we're going to come back, come out and uh, try to award a contract for that electronic health record. Strategies, transform into a functional organization, stand down the existing commands. We have uh, a Navy command, Nav Missa in San Antonio. We have an Army command, uh, uh, USAMITIC, also in San Antonio. Those commands will actually stand down um, on October 1st of 2015. Uh, those uh, staffs and operations are already beginning to be integrated into the Defense Health Agency, um, and we are in the process of actively migrating the responsibility of all of the systems and all of the things that those commands did, uh, migrating those from the responsibility of the service uh, personnel to the DHA. Eliminate duplication and redundancies. Awful lot of duplication and, and redundancy in, uh, in IT, certainly, and I think in other areas. Um, I can, I'll talk about some of the things that we find in, in a minute, but of course, all of the services have their thing, their own sort of IT infrastructure, which includes the, you know, the networks and the data centers and the wires and the cables and uh, the help desk support and all of that. And so we have a, a number of initiatives around how are we going to eliminate those redundancies and reduce that duplication. Reduce variability by means of standardization. Uh, I think we talked about that. We'll be leveraging the best IT practices from the commercial world as well as from what we see in other areas of government. Uh, and then finally, allocating resources to support the, um, the acquisition of the electronic health record and the subsequent deployment of that uh, electronic health record. Next slide. 
Uh, as General Rompuy says, no, no um, presentation would be complete without an organizational chart. Uh, this is ours. It's deliberately designed to be totally unreadable. Uh, uh, but uh, basically, the message here is we're organized Tell into... Tell them why that is. Why is that? So these guys don't go knocking on the door. They only know how to find you because it's central. <laughs> that's why. And then you direct the flow of all the folks knocking on your door. <laughs> Most of them already know where I am. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, this is a, we built this organization from scratch. Uh, we designed it as part of the stand up of the shared service. Uh, we consulted with lots of consultants, Gartner, and a whole bunch of people. Um, and it is basically a functional, uh, functionally based IT organization. We have a, an innovations group, we have an infrastructure group, we've got application support people, we have uh, you know, a group that does portfolio management, customer relations, we've got an information delivery group, and we've got a cybersecurity group. Okay, next slide. So uh, business case, I'm going to talk a little bit about our business case. Um, the business case basically has three components. Component number one, uh, BCA1, is around the savings um, and investments that we need to consolidate our IT management. And along with that, look at our contractual landscape. And what we're talking about when we stood up the agency was, let's look at all the contracts that are centrally managed by uh, either the former TMA organization or centrally managed by the services. So that is, those are the components of the business case number one. Business case number two it talks about consolidating and standardizing our IT infrastructure from the desktop down up to the data center, from the data center desk to the desktop, from the data center to the fingertips of our users. Our goal is to standardize all that IT infrastructure all that network infrastructure, all that end user infrastructure, and deploy in uh, to support the electronic health record a standardized IT infrastructure that supports the, uh, the uh, deployment of the IT of the electronic health record and hopefully gives you a better performing, less expensive, more reliable IT infrastructure in each one of your MTFs. That's a very big deal for us, particularly since we find that we have a lot of variability in IT infrastructure within the MTF facilities uh, themselves. We're working, on the, we're working on the wide area networks, the data center piece, and we're starting to work uh, on uh, what is inside of the MTFs. And then finally, rationalizing our IT portfolio. Um, again, you know, we brought the three services together, so we have at least three of everything. Uh, let me give you the poster child for application rationalization. About a year ago, uh, even before we stood up the, the DHA, um, a number of the guys got together um, and looked at our e-learning systems, and they took a look across the landscape, and they discovered that we had over 26 different uh, e-learning systems, computer-based training systems, if you will. We're taking that down to one. Uh, the payback on that uh, effort is less than a year. Uh, but we got all the services together, we looked at what the consolidated requirements for our combined e-learning um, environment should be, we looked at what systems in our portfolio met those consolidated requirements, uh, we narrowed it down to a subset of five, and then from there we took it down to uh, a single e-learning system. Guess what that allows us to do? That allows us to track everybody's uh, computer-based training activities and document those training activities in one database across the entire military health system. That's a pretty neat idea. We haven't done that before. So that is, uh, that is one, one, one area of applications where uh, very significant payback um, in terms of uh, cost and probably in terms of effectiveness uh, results from that, ac that kind of application rationalization. Next slide. Ah, here's the business case itself. Um, I want to point out the fact that while um, I think it was Admiral Moulton mentioned that his 14 results were shadow results, our 14 results are real results. Uh, and in term, and I and I don't mean that. Where's Admiral Moulton? Did he leave? He ran out on me. Okay, now I can say that. He knew uh, he was coming. What I mean by that is... You should see our staff meetings. They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean by that is they were, tracking, they were tracking the results with no real penalty for failure to perform. 
In our world, that is not the case. In fiscal 14, we had a penalty for failure to perform. Um, and I can, you, I'm sure you can't read the numbers. Um, when General Rob put the slide up there about the savings that collectively within the DHA we were able to generate, I think the bottom line in, in 14, I think the bottom line is somewhere around 238 million. He had a number up there for 33 uh, for, for HIT. We saved about 33 million uh, in, um, in fiscal 14. The business case said that we would save six, but there's another side to the story. Our business case said that in order to save six in 14, we were going to need, we were going to, need to invest 28 million. We actually invested four. So our budgetary impact on the organization in fiscal 14 was a 60 some odd million dollar positive budget variance. Some on, about half on the investment side, we invested a lot less than we thought and we saved a lot more than we thought we would. Uh, so having said that, um, that is the end of my soliloquy around fiscal 14. It is now behind us. General Rob wants to know where his Christmas present is, and so now we're starting to work on uh, fiscal year 15. Next slide. That's the uh, savings slide. Uh, again, by, by BCA, that one's a little out of date because I had to get this uh, slide deck in fairly early, but uh, it shows you sort of by business case where our savings were and, and how we accounted for them over the, uh, the course of the year. Next slide. Okay, so we're, we're more than halfway through our um, IOC to full operating capability um, timeline. Uh, we're hoping to reach full operating capability from an IT perspective on October 1 of 2015 uh, when we stand down our service-based uh, HIT commands and we move everybody officially into the DHA. So uh, from IOC to FOC, a number of initiatives we've got to take on, we're working on now, consolidate management and management resources across the services. We want to put the best people in leadership positions. That's not only our military folks, but also our civilian folks. Uh, we want to inventory and consolidate duplicative contracts. And for 15, we're going to now start looking not only at our centrally managed contracts, but we're going to start looking at the contracts that are in place in our military treatment facilities. And so we have a, a couple of initiatives which I'm going to talk about, one of which is to try to get now, begin to put our arms around the contracting landscape uh, for IT goods and services that are out there in our, our MTFs. Uh, Business case number two, consolidate and standardize IT infrastructure, data center to desktop. Uh, one, forest, one forest, active directory and enterprise management. We want to make sure we've got everybody in the MHS in a single uh, global address look, list. One network, we're going to be consolidating multiple networks into a single network. We are working with the DOD CIO's office uh, and the, uh, the service six organizations around the joint information uh, enterprise initiative that is coming out of DOD uh, and the joint regional security stack um, architecture that they're implementing, so we're plugged in there. One email, what a novel idea. Put everybody on one email system. Uh, and so we are uh, in the process of migrating everybody to a single email system. Uh, we'll wrap that up at the end of January when we finally convert our headquarters. Uh, everybody will be then actively on the DISA email, the Defense Enterprise email, uh, DEE, and we'll, we'll all be uh, uh, able to see everybody on email and, and have access to everybody's email. A single data center Same hosting strip. right? <laughs> Not quite. It's, we said, uh, didn't we say? Uh, Christmas. We I said Christmas. Ides of March or something like that. We said Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. Uh, one web, single web hosting solution, one desktop, a single desktop configuration strategy. When I got to the FAA in 2006, 2006, February of 2006, uh, the IT guys came in and said, uh, Welcome to the FAA, sir. Um, what kind of computer would you like? I said, What are my choices? They said, well, you can have a desktop, or if you like a laptop, you can have a laptop. I said, okay. Um, I like a, if I wanted a desktop, you know, what could you do for me? They said, well, you can have a big desktop, or you can have a small desktop. <laughs> I said, oh, that's not much choice. What if, what if I want a laptop? Oh, well, you, you have a, a couple of choices. You have a large laptop, and you have a small laptop. <laughs> okay. 
At the FAA in 2006, they had standardized their entire cadre of end user devices down to four configurations. They had an enterprise wide deal with Dell Computer. We ordered the stuff online from Dell. We put the address in where we wanted it shipped. Dell manufactured the computer. They put our standard set of software on it. They shipped it to where we wanted, and when we were done using it and it had to be refreshed, they took it away. They guaranteed us that all the data would be removed, and they disposed of the unit um, in a, an environmentally friendly fashion. That's pretty good service. They basically managed the entire life cycle. And oh, by the way, we got a new set of pricing for those standard configurations every six months. We met with Dell, and they would say, our prices are going down for these machines. We're introducing these machines. What do you guys want to do? And our prices continue to go down. So we certainly want to get there um, uh, in terms of uh, that, kind of, that kind of standardization, that kind of consistency uh, with our desktop. Uh, we have multiple help desks. We're going to consolidate uh, all of those into a single operation. Uh, one audiovisual and comm, uh, again, a single audiovisual and communication strategy. And then finally, rationalize the uh, HIT portfolio, identify duplicative applications, consolidate requirements, evaluate solutions, decide on a single solution, adopt the solution, and decommission the others, actually move on. So the uh, electronic health record will take a number of systems out of our portfolio, um, and we are going to be focusing on um, rationalizing the ones that will stay. Next slide. Challenges we face. Um, Standardizing the IT infrastructure. As I said, this is, not, this is not an exercise in technology. This is an exercise in anthropology. Uh, I had a, a boss one time say, you know, the uh, silicon-based units are easy to manage. It's the carbon-based units that are the problem. Uh, disrupting historical IT funding and approval processes. We are going to be moving lots of people's cheese. We are going to be upsetting long-standing relationships. We are going to be playing in people's sandboxes. We are going to be taking people's money. We are going to be telling people what they can buy and what they can't buy, what gets approved and what doesn't get approved. But again, this is the way we've got to run the business if we're going to be successful. We've got to keep ahead of the electronic health record program. Uh, we've got to manage the cultural change, obviously. I talked about that. Uh, we need to work to establish clinical process standards for incorporation into the electronic health record. That's an area that we haven't talked about much, but is hugely, hugely important. It's not an IT responsibility to do that. It's a clinical responsibility. It's a responsibility of our clinical community across the military health system coming together, and as Admiral Moulton said, gang of services to come together and agreeing how they're going to do stuff. You know, we can roll out standard desktops. That's easy. You know, you guys have to tell us how you're going to do a standard H&P or how you're going to do a standard, you know, patient exam or whatever. So uh, that, and that is being worked on. We'll eliminate duplicative applications um, and all the while uh, not breaking anything. And um, I think as uh, Mr. Marshall said, establishing and maintaining the trust of our cu customers that will do this right. Uh, and the bottom line is it's all about trust. It's all about the confidence that our customers have, that you all have as a military health system, uh, in our abilities to deliver timely, cost-effective IT goods and services to you and information to you to the right person at the right time in the right way. Uh, and I think that is... Uh, so this is the vision, full operating capability. Again, uh, pretty much covered all these. Facilitate communication, collaboration, fill our leadership positions. This is, takes us to FA, uh, FOC. Uh, we will be uh, looking at transitioning some funding in fiscal 17 out, um, uh, out uh, into the DHA on, uh, on the IT services, on, on the IT front. Uh, and next slide, I think. Those were, those were uh, thoughts from General Rob, so um, that is the, uh, that's the why not. I think that's it. Okay. I think, because uh, I know, I know, uh, Adam Adams is going to ask this question. So, uh, um, again, we could talk another two or three hours just about what's going on here, easily. 
But one of the things that, that, that uh, I want to foot stomp is, is uh, you know, he, all he's going to, well, not all, <laughs> it's an understatement. Okay, you know, we're going to provide what, what, what I call the, the, the black box for us to work off, okay? But, but, but the way we're going to run that, you know, the, the EHR uh, right now, and again, we're talking about the whole enterprise, but, but the, the sense of urgency about what we're doing here, this is key, because they're related, they're true, true, related. Okay, the acquisition of the electronic health record, the next generation healthcare record, is what's providing uh, the sense of urgency for what we are doing in the consolidation and the rationalization of our current HIT portfolio. Okay, that is key to understand because each service has been doing their own thing. They're, they're, uh, you have no idea how many county options are out there. Problem is, is we have not been as disciplined because, and I know this because these guys now work for us, the former CIOs of the services, of how many things they did not get assurances on that they hung on their systems. You can't run, okay, an uninsured, assured, right, system uh, as we move forward with the new electronic health record. So there's a lot of soul searching. There's a lot of amnesty boxes being, you know, being filled up out there by the services. A lot going on right now uh, that, 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 again, there's a sense of urgency is incredible. Now, the new EHR is not just uh, the document. In, in the olden days, olden days, this, you know, back when Jeffries and I were real docs, okay. Last week. Yeah, last week, yeah. You know, this was your health care record. It was written in here. This is all it was. It was a health care record. It was a documentation, okay? Now what happens, the electronic health record is, is almost a misnomer, okay? It's almost as if the, yeah, yeah, that too. But, but the fact that the documentation of your health care is only, it's almost a minor portion of what the electronic health record is doing. It's a clinical support tool and it's a business support tool, okay? And what's important that he didn't talk about, and that's a whole other lecture, is the functional champion. So th we're gonna drive these common clinical and these common business practices through the functional champion, okay, with all the subject matter experts from the services. And we learned this from all the other major healthcare organizations that transitioned to a centralized single electronic health record. They said you gotta get the folks who are gonna use it involved and so that's a whole other parallel effort going on right now. A lot going on, and I guess I wish we could spend all day talking about this, uh, but we got to talk about education and training next. So uh, time for one question real quick. If there's, there you go, first up. There you go, front row. So with all this I'm saying, it's just safe to say that the health record is That's what I'm talking about. Yes. I'm not even going to let him answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> he can answer that for me, yeah. Uh, answers, yeah. Along with another, a, a number of other apps, but basically your Alta CHCS, Accentris, uh, are going to be replaced with, with a single integrated solution. Now, if your National Capital Region Director, Admiral Bono, has her way, okay, it will be a lot sooner than that because she's going to volunteer to roll it out here sooner than later. But, but we'll see how that works out. All right, one more real quick question. Will there be any change in the DIACAP process? Will there be any change in the DIACAP process? Um, that sounds like a pain point with you, doesn't it? Uh, yes, uh, and, and um, what I can tell you from a cybersecurity standpoint, the DHA, or the DHA, well, the DHA is participating with the overall DOD as DOD changes its uh, information assurance process, and they're going from a uh, what's called a DICAP process to more of a NIST specified risk management framework. They call it RMF, uh, and that change is going to take place over about the next two years. Hey, Mr. Marshall, why don't you come up here so we we, get, we got uh, and then uh, I can answer Moulton's questions. I mean, you miss it, okay? Because I was part of that, by the way. Any other questions on anything we talked about? Stuff? Yes, ma'am, back row. My question is, with the new health record, now the THCS and all the don't talk to the state of the logistics. So with their dispensing, it's not being tracked in where how you order. So the physicians don't talk. Is that something that's being looked at also? Uh, yes, ma'am. We're uh, In a word, yes, we're painfully aware of that fact, and we need to get that problem fixed. So we're looking at that in the context of you know, the, the new electronic health record and how do those systems interface. Right, not only a clinical support tool, but a business support tool. Yep. 
Sir? <laughs> All right, so joint legacy viewer. Now, first you got to understand the context of what it is, okay? It's for the service treatment record, okay? It's not, it's not the bi directional health information exchange. It's for the service treatment record, which is the, the basic core set of documents that you need to uh, process and file and process your benefits, okay? So the J, uh, and so what that, and actually it's, that, uh, if you put it in perspective, that's actually working quite well, all right? In fact, it's, in fact, you would almost think that it is almost, <laughs> again, uh, the son of uh, bi-directional health information exchange. But, but I watched it, I got a demo the other day. Um, uh, we were looking at, uh, uh, it was a patient that was being seen locally, and then they had to pop into a VA up there on Long Island, okay, and we looked at that, we looked at, you know, all we using this to, to, so the answer is yes, and, and right now it's limited uh, in scope because they didn't want to break uh, the engine, in other words, they didn't want to look like, uh, you know, 495 at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, all right, so the limited number of users, but then as we, as again, as, as we work out the bugs, we're going to add, a, as I call, a few more lanes, and we're going to start adding users, but the folks that really need it hardcore right now are using it, and it is really making a difference. It's really making a difference, yes. What else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, the big house. Yes. All right, so so you're you're oh, that's good. That's a great question, okay? Because I need to go back and sort of correct not that, okay? The, he he used the term command in a generic sense. Good thing he's not here. So anyway, so okay, he's the market. He or she's the market director. The market director. Okay. Now, remember we talked about unity of effort. This is not unity of command. Okay. In a perfect world, you would have unity of command, but we're. Again, if that's your school of thought, but you don't always need unity of command to get unity of effort, okay? Now, that being said, okay, uh, and let's talk about the business plan. It's a maturation process, okay? And he talked about that. He's living the dream right now, all right? Now, um, so in the olden days, let's, let's I like to use Portsmouth because it's really easy. There's three services. In the olden days, the Navy would do a business plan for their medical center, and it would go up the Navy channels. And the Air Force would do it in, at Langley, and it would go up the Air Force channels, okay? And then the Army would do a business plan, and it would go up for Eustis, and it would go up the Army channels. Now, and they may or may not have agreed upon things that they wanted to do collectively, okay? All right? All right? But, but when it got up to the services, the services could prioritize how they saw fit, okay? You know, add or subtract, or whatever. So, so and, and, and that sort of worked, but it, it didn't work well. We were even competing with each other, okay? Or depending on... Leadership, okay, uh, we, we, we would play, and then they'd turn leadership, and then we wouldn't play together, okay? Now, what you're going to see now, and that's, he talked about it shadowing, and, and he's, he, he doesn't know the vision as much because he's kind of new to this, okay? But the vision is, is now the business plan goes up as a single business plan, as a single business plan that all three services will work out. Okay, that they are going to commit to, just like you would have committed at Langley or used to support Smith, okay? All right, but you're going to commit together on, hey, you're going to work this ortho share, and you're going to work this, you're going to work that. We've never done that. Now, that's going to be submitted that way, and the money is going to be earmarked that way, okay? Not going to happen perfectly this year, better next year, okay? I, I, it's still going to flow through service channels, okay, but it's going to be radioactively earmarked, okay, so that it's spent the way they said they were going to do it, okay, 
Services can still go off piste if they have a reason, but you're gonna, what, what you saw there, what you didn't have before, if you do it, it's gonna be highlighted at the governance level. So if you do something as a service that, that, that goes, either, you know, either goes, again, there may be a rational reason that, 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 that you can't adhere to the business plan, you're gonna have to defend yourself in front of your peers at the governance level. We've never done that before. Now, let's go back to what you said. No, the, so, so the answer is, as we work forward, okay, and this is, I said, be careful. You don't want to be a surgeon, okay, that shows up at Belvoir, buys a house in Fredericksburg, and then gets told he or she's going to work at Walter Reed. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's going to go, no, 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 no. What we're going to do is we're going to migrate towards looking, matching the requirements or the supply to the demand signal, okay? Long term, long term, okay? So you're gonna do a market analysis. You may find out you need to be doing all the hips up at Walter Reed. You need to be, maybe you need to be doing all the knees down at Belvoir, and you may find out that you're gonna do all of, uh, of, uh, of something else at, at uh, Andrews, okay? But not overnight, okay? So, but we're going to work so that we manage that, okay? Now, short term, short term, crisis. You get an unexpected demand signal, either from a deployment or whatever. We do this today. You say, hey, I need you to work up at, 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 uh, at Walter Reed for a month. Okay, okay. But so they're going to be able to, in other words, acutely direct, direct, manage the workflow to the demand signal and then build a business plan so that when, the, again, maybe the next rotation comes in, you're buying a house up your army, you're buying a house up in Bethesda, north of Bethesda, and not necessarily in Fredericksburg. So that, you know, it's, people get spooked when we talk about that, but that's, you can see that that's where that's gonna go. And it's still gonna be a negotiation with the services, okay, but you're gonna work it out at the governance level. 45% of our healthcare dollars are delivered in those six markets, plus Balboa and Fort Bragg. And we've gotta get a handle on it. We've got to get a handle on it, and we've got to match the requirements and the supply to the demand signal. For the, we're betting the farm on the multi-service markets, you know, and I, I, we have service buy-in on this. We do, uh, but believe it or not, we do, and it's, it's going to be a lot easier. Single demons codes, we're working on a lot of these different things, okay? This is real. Like you said, we, we have a governance model, vetoes noted, we press. What else? I know, I know, I know. Dr. Farmer, you gotta have something. You probably can't wait to come back in. You know what I mean? I got a couple of surgeon generals in the back of the going like, why did they ever leave? <laughs> I, I, I will ask a question and I'm going to follow on to the, uh, the one that the Colonel asked us now. In, uh, in Admiral Baldwin's uh, favorite slide, he showed both Opcon and Tacon down at the Governor's yep. market. So I have two questions. First is which is it, because they're very different. And two, he showed an arrow going up and showing that upcon take on going all the way up to ASDHA, which prompts the question, who, who is upcon and or take on to whom? He explained very, very well the MDAC law as a coordinating body, but upcon or take on is to a person. <coughs> so, okay, where, where is that? I didn't make that damn slide up. Let me tell you why. Who's the ball? And that moment has a word. Alright, so he didn't make the slide either. Give me key. Okay, so, so let's get that straight. So um, <clears throat> the slide is more of a pictorial, okay, right, of the world that they believe they live in right now, okay? <laughs> and it probably feels that way. So, 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 knowing that your DNA is Army, I know you like your C2 org lines, you know, uh, I got that, but you're right, that's not a, that is not a, an actual uh, validated, coordinated, signed off on, or, or organizational construct. No, the answer, it's, it's kind of a, this is what it looks like, this is what it feels like, this is what we're working through, these are the issues. Uh, it's more like, 
Yes, the opcon, adcon, well, adcon is easy. The opcon take on issues. So, so the opcon take on issues, I sort of answered indirectly with, with, with the whole acute versus long term business. You see what I'm saying? Take on, hey, I need you to, we do that today, you know. I remember when I was at the academy, you guys were stepping, you know, 20,000 troops out of, uh, out of uh, Fort Carson. I said, what do you need? See you in a week or two or three or four, okay? Got that. And then long term, you know, say, hey, we need to set up, but, but not just a handshake between, say, me and then back then, uh, uh, Colonel Line, but a, but a commitment by the Air Force to insert this surgical capability into Carson because that's where the business model says it. And the Air Force wants what? They want currency and competency. They don't care where they're cutting. They just want it, okay? So if they're cutting into that house, that's fine. But a commitment that's backed up by the business plan, okay, that's not a handshake, okay, that will be monitored and followed at the governance level, okay, which we never did before. That's fundamentally different. So that's kind of a long answer to a short question, but yes. But good question. So, but now, uh, uh, give some uh, Marshall here. Get off the hook. I got some questions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, talk about, uh, 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 you know, we talked about standardization. We, you know, talk about, you know, how many people in here are in the, are in the money world or, or, you know, the financial world or in the, you know, yeah, you know, so you know, you say, hey, you know, I don't care how we measure, why don't we measure my way? You know, the whole, you know, bags of money. Talk about how we're going to, what's in bag water, or whatever the hell the bags are you guys call them, um, is the same. In other words, services don't even account for money the same in the bags. We're somehow we're moving towards that. That's key. That's that's step one. Uh, okay, so there's since there's one other money person here in the room. Uh, we won't, uh, won't drag you through this uh, in tremendous detail, but, but why do we have different appropriations, okay? So this is kind of a key question. This goes back to World War II when Congress realized that they were just appropriating like all the money in the galaxy to the war effort, and in some places it was being spent immediately, and in other places, you know, the Navy was building ships with it, and the Army Air Corps was building bombers, and it was taking forever, and nobody really had a very good account. So, so they said, enough, of, stop the madness, we're going to separate things. These big capital investments, we're going to do those differently, okay? So that kind of started a whole process of saying, okay, look, money has a purpose, let's tie it to that purpose, and then let's understand how we spend those things, okay? So, um, so we have, you know, bag one, which is, the, the in-house care at, at our military hospitals. We have bag two, which is private sector care. Um, and then we have other supporting bags, okay? I'm not gonna drag you through all the bags. We can come see me afterward class if you wanna have that discussion, okay? Um, the, here's the thing that we have, though, in the Defense Health Program. It's a wonderful and flexible tool, and you are clever, okay? So, so over time, you have said, okay, so I need to buy something in IT, but I'm out of IT money. But hey, if my computer doesn't work, doesn't that support patient care? So can I spend that out of bag one? Answer, yes, okay? Because what the Congress in their wisdom said a long time ago is stay on your mission. Don't let the fact that you ran out of money in the IT bag keep you from doing the right thing for the patient, okay? But then you got the likes of me to deal with because it needs to be right. So I need to go find that stuff and put it in the right bag so that over time we keep the right proportions here and we understand that the IT expenses are all in the IT bag, okay? The problem is we haven't had the discipline nor have we had the corporate effort to kind of keep that stuff clean. So <clears throat> when my good friend Dave Bowen here says, okay, let's pull all the IT money, then it creates a fair amount of panic, okay? And you guys know this, because you've lived it, okay? It creates a fair amount of panic because people are like, hey, hey, hey but wait, wait, we're, we're buying this over here and that over there, and, you know, we said that that was an important part of facility, so we bought it over in bag seven, and, you know, and so because our history hasn't been clean, it creates unnecessary, is how I'll regard it, complications. Okay, and again, we, the way we got here was with the best of intended purposes. So well, you know what's cool? is all the sinners that are responsible for that behavior 
now work in the big house. Yeah. So, so we, they know where all the sins were committed, especially the HIT guys and the business support. So that's key. That, but they see they were doing it to survive, but they also see there's a better world, and, and, and they, they're working towards this. I mean, it's, it's not folks that are coming in from the East. are folks that understand, have lived it, and want to make it better. I, that's, that's probably a good way that, to put it. That, that's right? absolutely right. And, and again, it's, the, it's back to the trust and the cultural piece, because the natural instinct of providers, and again, we have trained you this way, and the natural instinct of the money folks is that if I suddenly go, hey, why is that IT expenditure in bag one, your expectation is that I'm ripping it off, okay? Your expectation is that I'm out to steal it, okay? And, and so we live in an adverse fiscal climate. You can read that in the paper today, okay? So, uh, so the truth is, is that the budget's gonna, gonna go down, but I, okay, that is going to be whatever it's going to be. I'm more focused on getting it right in the right bags so that we have a clear understanding of what IT really costs because Dave, if he really understands that, can set up the IT to be a more effective business process. And if we choose to live in a world where we're constantly not being truthful, honest, transparent, however you want to think of that, with each other, then we're not going to get very far at, at this DHA thing. Yeah, I've been up here now about four and a half years and... and and again, no one's doing anything wrong, okay? But, but what happened is you get to a topic where you wanted to get to a common end state or we wanted to do a pulse of how things are being done and, and, and it happened all the time, not, not on purpose, not to be deceitful, but you come up and say, I can't play or I can't tell you because I don't care it the same way. And so even if I'm being nice here. Even if you wanted to play, okay, you couldn't, okay? Now, if you didn't want to play, you had an out. And so, so, but, but you, you can see you can't run an enterprise, okay? And then, and we, we and again, I'm gonna go back to, you know, you're still Army, you're still Navy, you're still Air Force, you're still Marines, you still have to support the mission. No, that's why we created a defense of agency and not a unified medical command. Okay, because we understood the value of that. Okay, but the core of the services, okay, the 60, 70, 80 percent solution, and depending on where you are, okay, all right, it's going to come out of the defense health agency and agreed upon so that you can, because the money's going to be less, so folks could say, well, I want to continue business as usual. The money was going to be less. So what was going to happen is your service surgeon general is saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to business as usual. Problem is, what would happen is the DHP proportionally wouldn't be able to give you as much money as before. So, so you know, your, 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 your breadth, okay, of what you could cover for your service chief, okay, or the depth that you needed to provide something for your service chief, okay, you would have a hard time to cover down on that. Or, you know, we could do it for years, especially in, especially that we couldn't spend all the money we got the last 10 or 20, 10 or, 10 or 12 years. Now, as we move forward, the only way that you're going to be able to provide the depth or the breadth to the service chiefs, to your service chiefs, and the combatant commanders is you're going to have to, we're going to have to work together. We're going to have to be what I call, you know, interdependent, okay? And again, going back to trust, going back to trust, okay? You're going to hear it from education and trust, all right? We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do it, okay? And the same studs and studettes that were doing HIT for you, or doing education and training, or coming up with the great ideas, are the same studs and studettes that are doing it now, either within the DA, DHA, or, okay, or working with the DHA, okay, but they're working alongside Army, Navy, and Air Force. And you know what, you'd be surprised, you know, what best of breed looks like. It's, it's fun. And the emism was excited. And he, 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 he sort of, each emism, those 16 is, is doing something way better than the other guys. They've already broken the code. Like, how do I get the, the ambulances to come to my house instead of, instead of the civilian hospital? Or how do I keep them from being admitted to that civilian hospital instead of bringing back, okay? Color, uh, I think it was Portsmouth broke the code. All right? All right, so then they shared that with Colorado Springs, and Colorado Springs was running with it. So now I just saved that much effort. Okay, now they can use that bandwidth, you know, to, to look at something else. And so it's fun to watch this in this even short 9, 10, 12 months of where, of where we've been. And again, I, where we're going 
potential is incredible. And, and I, I know these guys, you know, you know, it's fun to see old guys be excited. I mean, it is fun to watch these guys come forward, you know, you know with, a, with a skip and a step. You know, it's, it's fun to watch colonels who who have, you know, know it's their, their, you know, kind of like their, their last assignment, and they say, I'm having more fun, you know, than I've ever had in my entire career, because they see the opportunity there. It's just fun to watch these folks. It is fun to watch these people. I know, I know we're in your break, and we got the former Surgeon General back there who he keeps asking me, how do I get back here? You know, how do I get back here? So, Dr. Green. So just to follow up on the budget, how the transition to detail is going in the national capital area, and will DHA be connected? So if you did it, you're brave, you were sitting there. That's great. Okay, so I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear it all, but, 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 but a little bit. So the, so the, so the GFIBS implementation is underway. Again, they implemented one October. Uh, DIMLS is not yet working because it was not nested in, into that. So that's going to be about a six-month operation. So, uh, uh, so there's some pain involved around that, particularly as we begin the process of audit in DOD that will basically mean more work for NCR in, in many ways. So, but the good news is, is that in six months it'll be done. Okay, so, um, so I believe uh, in the short haul, it's going to be a terrific proof of concept to demonstrate uh, how we can implement, you know, GFIBs somewhere else um, uh, that's not, you know, particular to Army. So that opens up the opportunity. I will tell you, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of movement now uh, in the financial world as audit is not coming. It is here. Okay, it has arrived. Um, so um, uh, in, the, in the case of Navy, Navy declared uh, about a year and a half ago that STARS, its, its 30, 40 year old accounting system, uh, was not going to survive and they were going to have to figure out what to do with the half of the Navy that's not on ERP. Because for those of you who know, Navy went through ERP, got about halfway through, and then did not have enough money to fully implement it. So they stopped where they were, okay? And they had some major entities that were not implemented into their new financial system, like the fleet, okay? So, 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 so and, and, and again, a very logical approach by the Navy to start with the big shore activities, okay? So, so now, what, do you, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? So I know that Navy Medicine has an alternative of analysis that's going on to figure out, okay, where are they going to go? So again, I, I think uh, we have uh, some of the activities, uh, when you look across the military health system, some of the activities are on DAI, like USIS and DH, DHA headquarters. Uh, Army and NCR are on GFIBs. Um, uh, Navy's considering what to do. And then, of course, Air Force uh, has some challenges uh, that, they're, that they're working through, uh, and they're looking to deploy a new system in the near future. Uh, uh, but, of course, when I was the controller at Transcom, as some of you know, I was an old line guy. But I, you know, there was, it, the, the deployment was imminent thin, is the way I remember the conversation. So there have been some challenges there. But, but I think, you know, what we're going to get out of this, and uh, is, again, audit's going to drive a lot of us into commonly considering, okay, where are we and how do we manage these systems and how can we make them more effective uh, uh, so that we get not only transparency on the finances but also the audit outputs that we need. And uh, just talk about that. You talk about this, uh, this uh, MTF that's uh, um, located halfway between Belvoir and formerly known as Walter Reed, okay? So Bethesda uh, campus. And what you're seeing is, is it's, he didn't say this because it was, but, but Air Force said, Malcolm, I said, wait a minute, what, why, why don't we try that GFIBS? You know, I mean, my God, you know, you know in, the old, in the old paradigm, that would be unheard of. But what you're seeing is, even though we don't have C2 over, well, I got C2 over two of the facilities, but, but you're watching the Andrews just because of the relationship at a level never seen before, saying, you know, they're, 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 they want to say, hey, I, you know, I'm missing out on the market if I don't join the market. You know, and it's about recapture, recapture, recapture. It's about currency and competency, okay? It's about saving dollars. And, and I, I talk about the, the, the six markets, the six plus two. And, and so does the business model support the readiness model? Or does the readiness model support the business model? Yes. Yes. Because you see, the, the more, the better we get at the business, okay, the recapture, Okay, which then drives our cost down because some of it's sunk cost. All right, all right. But at the same time, then I'm upping my currency and competency of my readiness, medically, my ready medical force. And so it's it's fun to watch that interaction. It's fun to watch the the uh, 
uh, Andrews shifting, again, resources, OB, GYN resources, down to Belvoir, because Belvoir now is actually routinely uh, maxing out on their capability to deliver. Because people want to go to Belvoir now instead of go, we used to, they used to go downtown, they want to go to Belvoir. Oh, what a problem to have. But again, now because of, the, of again, the relationships, okay, the OB docs, you know, and, and GYN docs, they want the cases. You know, I don't care if they can turn right or left when they get on the Beltway. You know, they want to go down to Belvoir, not because they want to help out, because they, you know, they want to deliver. They want to do the cases. So it's fun to watch. It's just fun to watch when we give them the opportunity and a little bit of oversight and a little bit of, of, of uh, again, uh, resourcing. It's fun to watch what these guys are doing. And that's happening in all the markets. And each market has stories to tell you like that. Even, in, even though it's a shadow year, okay, even though it's the first year, okay, but they're, but they're, but they're, but they're behaving like it's game on. You know, and they got to see, I'm a match back there. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Once they get it, you know, they get it, you know, and there's no stopping. Yes, sir. This guy wants to say something. Some of us who have the opportunity to serve on the Defense Health Board and or the Institute of Medicine on um, the special population um, are most interested in two issues of your EHR acquisition. Maybe you could quickly review them. One is the possibility of any incorporation of military specific exposure, exposure information, occupational health information, deployment information in one single EHR, which is asked in the civilian sector, and the civilian sector is actually looking for it. Mm -hmm. Number two mm -hmm. is obviously the interoperability, DOD, VA, civilian, mm -hmm. beyond what is currently the case. Yep. Yep. Those two issues. How did the acquisition process and what you expect to do get? from this summer address those two military VA specific issues in a way that's beyond what I can buy on the shelf from Epic or Sermon. Dave, I can answer I know Dave, I hope you can answer it any more technically. Take one off it Okay. So uh, again I don't know if I didn't review what I believe I believe that there were that that the central database for that special population, I believe that was one of the requirements. So I'm glad you asked me that, okay? I'm gonna go back and ask that, but I believe it was one of the requirements. Yes. And again, these, these guys are pretty extensive. Now, that doesn't mean that these guys are gonna meet the requirement, but we're gonna, if, if they don't, we will. If they don't, we will. Okay, because that, that will, I, I know that that is a, uh, that is a, that is a uh, like you said, it's, it's gonna save us a lot of work time in more ways than one. Okay, second part of your question, Dave. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, what what we intend to do, we've got a we've got a very large interoperability effort going on with VA now. We've identified I think 28 different clinical areas. We've looked at um, standardization of uh, terminology, vernacular, if you will. We've developed translators that will translate our stuff into the, the common vernacular. VA is doing the same on their side so we can get you know, we can, we can talk, even though we're talking different languages, we have a translator in, in the middle. So we've got, I think, seven or eight of those clinical uh, areas up in operational. We're moving forward with the remaining 20. We're working with the VA on their side. Basically, the EHR is going to plug in, uh, actually, probably more easily than our current sort of hodgepodge of systems. Uh, we do have a good understanding of what data flows back and forth, how it, how it runs in terms of the technology and the, the, uh, you know, the formatting of the data and all that stuff. And so the, the intent is we'll drop the EHR in, we'll, we'll hook up those, those data flows, and, and remember now, we're going to be six years, seven years, where we're going to be running a bunch of facilities on the old systems and a bunch of facilities on the new systems. So we'll, we'll, we'll have both those connections going simultaneously. But, uh, but uh, these guys had to simplify for me because I'm a my doc was, was, you know, all the groundwork that they're laying right now on the, on the, on the com common data elements is to drive, for the most part, you know, not only are you speaking the same language, but you're speaking the same doctrine. You know, because you and I both know it's hard to understand someone from the Bronx to hear from, uh, hear from uh, you know, uh, Louisiana, you know, so uh, <laughs> speaking the same language. Yeah, sure you are. So, um, but that's, you know, that's where we're going. And in the finance world, even you know, in the banking world, you know, they all broke the code. You know, so it's easier to do today with the new systems than it was, that's the second part, than it was with the old legacy systems. Yes. 
So if I can just add from the business side, so we're, so the one person who does finance left the room. So, but many of you know, <laughs> many of you know that these, that the, that the business processes or the business systems that we have are very antiquated. Uh, and frankly, that's the source of a tremendous amount of the information that we get about how the system is operating, okay? So, uh, uh, and so many of you already can see the dilemma here that, hey, uh, you better have a pretty thorough plan on how you're going to implement those antiques into the new machine, or you better be thinking about the next generation of machine. So, so again, we don't have answers on those things, but we are talking about it, and we see it, and we are working it, okay? So, it's, uh, so I think that's a real strength of this process in that we're able to talk about these problems and, and try to get a more effective uh, central perspective and handle on them because the RFP includes the business systems that currently yep. exist yep. as, part, uh, as yep. part of, okay, what are we going to do with these things and how are, how are they going to, how, how they want to be handled. Now, David, you want to say something else? No, I'm good. Yeah. Anyway, I, I ate a couple, I know we talked about that, so, but I, I got to let Jerry Miller get up here. So, where's Jerry Miller? Right here. He was a snake, you know, so, all right, so, again, I, I know y'all stayed through the, through the break, and, and again, we're, we'll stay here afterwards, and, uh, we need to get going with the next session of the education training. So, uh, General Miller, come on up. Director of the newly established education training director.